Okay, so we've had our first kind of cold morning. Did I startle you, Scout? I'm so sorry. So we set up our little heater, and of course the dogs are all gathered around it like it's a fireplace. Homie! 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 You won't even look at me. Homie! Dude! Hello, homie. What's up with homie? So this is my 2600 gallon water tank so I've had a lot of people say in the comments that we should dig a well and yes we have already thought of that so because of where we live out here we're so close to the Grand Canyon that they no longer are will issue permits to dig a well and not just that but the depth from this exact spot we're at is 3500 feet to the water table and it, ha it goes through a lot of rock so the size rig that they would have to have out here to dig would not only be way out of our price range, but uh, I don't even think they could get down our roads. We would have to put probably $100,000 into the main road just so they could get it out here. To give you an idea, our local gas station has two wells. The guy owns them and had, had them dug long ago. And he had a company come out and redig, redrill one of the wells that had collapsed. And that rig was there for over three months, running 24 hours a day with a crew of 20. Now that's not cheap. And the size of this rig, it was massive. I mean, it only can come in on paved roads, you know, like this. This is a massive, like a, almost like a giant oil derrick or something. It's, I had never seen a drill rig that big just for doing water. And uh, yeah, like I said, three months running 24 hours a day with a crew of 20 guys. I mean, that's, uh, that's nowhere in our price range ever. Not for an individual landowner. I mean, you're pretty, what would that be? A half million dollars or maybe a million dollars? I mean, that's a big operation. So I hope that answers some more questions. Some, answer some some for the viewing audience about the water tank and why we're doing what we're doing yeah and one thing that's never been a problem out here is water i mean we always could have hauled water the whole time if we had you know figured a way to do it and we also can you know pretty much always have water delivered so um, i've never had to restrict how much water i use uh, um, even when you're paying for a water delivery i mean to somebody in a, in a city situation, if you you know had 2,000 gallons delivered, and you, you know we were spending $140 for 2,000 gallons, um, that might sound like a lot of money, but we look at it like this: that 2,000 gallons was almost the entire season of us being here of waters. And eventually, what I'm going to do is build a gigantic roof that's only about two feet off the ground, and I'm going to bury four of these tanks. I'm going to wait till I get a tractor because it's going to be a bit of work, but I'm going to bury four of these tanks, and that's going to be my water collection, my rainwater collection. Um, with a short roof, I can maintain it, I can clean it, there's all kinds of things I can do. Um, and, you know, this season, we probably, literally, if I had a roof, say, 30 foot by 40 foot, I probably could have filled four of these containers completely full, which is well over 10,000 gallons. So that's basically my plan for the future. But even if we had a house here, I would say that me and Sue are never going to use more than probably two of these per year. So uh, and if I'm able to collect four, I'll always have way more water than I need. And if we get back into a more normal cycle like we are now, It'll be this green. This is how green it is actually supposed to be every year. We just haven't, it hasn't been for 20 some odd years because of a, a long extended drought. I decided to get a water delivery. We found a company that's actually cheaper than the old company. So I'm having a delivery, I'm gonna haul some later. Um, I hurt my back when we were getting Jeremiah's truck out of the mud and yeah, it's, it's been in pretty bad shape for several days now, so. Anyway, get into water delivery. Go. Yeah, that's the only way to go. It doesn't come out then. Yep, that's what I gotta set up. 
Look at that thing. Power takeoff pump. GTO. Yeah, this should just about fill my tank. I had about 350, 400 gallons in there, so it's gonna be 1,900. So, yeah, it should uh, it should bring us up to uh, somewhere around here. I mean, that's uh, that's almost all the way. That's probably all of the water I'm gonna need for the rest of the season because I like to leave by the time we take off it'll be about this much and I like to leave it about that full one it pretty much never freezes I mean that big of a thick of a chunk of water takes a long time to freeze and it heats up every day when the Sun comes out so I mean this place even in the winter time when this place gets down to single digits at night it is still in usually the low 40s during the day and then the Sun shines on this in the winter there's not very many clouds and so like right now the outside of this is probably 130 degrees 140 degrees so what's amazing though is algae does not grow inside these tanks as long as you're using the water I must have had over 600 gallons left because he brought 1900 gallons and we pumped all of it in there and I was up there on the ladder and it is literally full to right here in the cap <laughs> that is so awesome it is such a good feeling to know that this thing is completely full and i already know uh the amount of water we're going to use the rest of the season uh probably be about this much we're going to still be here for another uh month and a half at least and that's doing lots of laundry and that's going to be uh washing the rigs uh i need to uh redo the treatment on the outside of the RV. I'm gonna have to do some pressure washing. I'm going to pressure wash the razor and I'm gonna pressure wash the navigator to get all the big mud off of them. So I've got plenty of water to do that now. And the great thing is when the, when the tank is this full, the pressure that comes out of this hose, it has a really good water flow, I've measured it. It's uh, about three and a half gallons a minute, which is not bad for a garden hose. I mean, it's not, it's not super high, but it's a lot more than any faucet in a house. It's awesome. I've got really a good, good water set up here for the rest of the year, and I could haul water anytime I want. I mean, if I wanna, if I wanna leave this thing completely full for the season, I can take one of the totes and I can throw it in my trailer, even after Aja's taken off, and uh, haul it down and fill it up and just keep this thing full if I want. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I probably won't. I'll probably let it go down to half full, let it sit that way for the winter, and then when I get back, put fresh water in it just like I did last time, so. And to refill it when I get back, I'll probably haul water then, um, because I can only call the guy out when he delivers uh, 1,900 gallons. It's, that's the minimum for us. And my tank was at this level this morning, so which means that's probably, I'm guessing about five or 600 gallons, so. That means I have to be down this far before I can call them or else I'm gonna be paying to pour some of it on the ground because that's exactly what they do if there's extra. They just pour it on the ground because they don't take their trucks half full or partially full. That's, that makes them unstable. Nothing like a nice secure feeling of having full water tank. It's so weird to feel this part and this part's cool. We have a sword for the uh, party coming up this weekend and look at how she reacts to this sword. Yeah. You like that baby girl? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. You like that baby girl? <laughs> I wanna get the other one out so we can duel. <laughs> this thing's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs>